Today, we're going to be reviewing the Iger map box system from Freewell. They were kind enough to send it to me, and I've been able to use it on a couple of shoots. So I'm going to let you know what I like about it, what I dislike about it, and how I think it fits into my workflow as a documentary filmmaker. For those of you that are new around here, my name is Riley, and I'm a documentary filmmaker who likes talking all things filmmaking and creativity. So if you're someone who is interested in making documentaries or films with small crews, then you're in the right place. Consider subscribing and following along. All right, let's get into the video. The design and build quality of the Iger system is really well thought out and it's easy to use. The variable ND system is a one to five stop range and it has hard stops, which means that you're not gonna run into that nasty cross polarization pattern, the X pattern that you can get on a lot of other screw on ND systems. And just the fact that the knob sits on top of the lens means that I can access it pretty quickly and I'm not worried about kind of accidentally touching the front of the lens and getting a smudge mark uh, on the variable ND system itself. Here's an example of what this matte box looks like on my FX30. Uh, the flag is pretty rigid and sturdy and the filters are accessible with uh, one hand. Be able to drop them in and out. So overall, this system, it's well built, it's lightweight, it's easy to kind of strip down or uh, build up depending on the shoot that you're doing and what you need it for. If you want, you can even take the matte box itself off. So you can take the, basically like the box and the flag section and just use the variable ND system on the front of the lens. And even the, like the drop-in tray on the front here uh, is still accessible for you to use the gradient filter uh, on the front of the lens. Now, Freewell also does send its products with some really nice and well thought out pouches and cases. So this is the pouch that the variable ND system comes in and it's got kind of like an accordion thing in the middle here. The diffusion filter, uh, which they call Glow Mist, uh, comes in the pack at a quarter strength and it's pretty uh, misty. Uh, I would probably recommend the 1 8 strength, uh, but it comes in this, this really nice pouch as well and it's got this little pull tab that will pull the, um, the filter up so you're not having to kind of fuss through a pouch uh, and get it out. So, all in all, everything is just really well thought out, really well made. The kit comes with most of your standard step up rings and it comes in this little pouch as well. And as you can see, it just is well made, well thought out, uh, and it definitely has a, a good amount of attention to detail. Now, the system itself is designed to attach to the front of your lens. There's no way to use a 15 millimeter rod system, which I find fine. And since the matte box itself is pretty lightweight, this isn't a big deal at all. You'll be able to use pretty much any standard filter size up to 95 millimeters. Overall, the system itself has room to grow with you based on your shooting scenarios and your needs. It has options for different effect filters, gradient filters, and different strengths of NDs like I've mentioned. So overall, I think the system is really well thought out. There's a lot of attention to detail in the pouches, in the cases, and just the overall design and aesthetic of the way that this system is put together. So what didn't I enjoy about the Iger system from Freewell? Well, there's not a whole lot, but there are two things that I will point out. Uh, that I noticed when using it. And the first one and kind of the biggest one to me is that this is like a completely closed system or like a completely proprietary system. So all of the filters that are gonna go with this are gonna have to be purchased from Freewell. So if you need something kind of outside of what Freewell offers, you're gonna be stuck for the most part. It doesn't accept uh, filter trays in the standard 4x4 size or the 4x5.6 size. Now, I know that a lot of people that are probably going to be looking into something like this might not be in a position where they're purchasing or uh, renting those filters a whole lot, but it is something to keep in mind for the future. And it is something for me that I think is kind of a bummer because there are 
lots of projects, especially recently, where I've been renting this type of filtration because I have a specific look that I wanna go for. So your typical black promis filters, your black satin filters, or even just a fixed ND uh, in one of those filter sizes is, is not gonna work for this matte box. The other thing that's worth pointing out is that when I was on the darker end of the variable ND range, so at or pretty close to that fifth and final stop, I did notice a color shift on the image. And to my eye, it looks like it has a somewhat noticeable magenta shift. And I'll show you some examples from a project that I did recently with my friend Sarah. But you can definitely see in the water, on the white canvas, and even in the blue of the sky, there definitely is a noticeable magenta shift. Fortunately, I don't think that this is particularly difficult to correct out in post, but it is gonna be something that you need to take note of because you probably are gonna notice it on your image. So how do I think that this matte box fits into a documentary style workflow? Well, for me, despite the things that I just mentioned, I really did enjoy it. The fact that it's lightweight, it's compact, and the variable ND system is easy to reach with that little knob, and it has hard stops means that I can focus more on composition and the storytelling and less on having to just fuss with gear. Now, there are definitely jobs where I'm gonna need outside filtration. And so for me, I don't think that this is gonna be the end all be all matte box system for me. But I think that there are a lot of jobs where I just want a lightweight and compact matte box system with a variable ND filter. And this is definitely gonna get the job done. I think I can live with the slight magenta color shift that comes with it. And especially if I'm editing and color grading what I'm shooting, I don't think this is gonna be a deal breaker by any stretch of the imagination. Overall, I think that Freewell did an excellent job with this matte box system. They literally fit a ton into a tiny little footprint. In the depth of about two inches, you can squeeze in diffusion filters, a variable ND system with hard stops, and even a gradient filter if that's something that you're looking for. Overall, I feel like Freewell did an excellent job and paid a lot of attention to detail. This is a matte box system that I've enjoyed shooting with and feel comfortable recommending, and it's something that I'm gonna be using on my kit moving forward. That is gonna do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to let me know in the comments section below what your thoughts are on this matte box, and if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. As always, I will catch you guys in the next one.